We're here with Angela Colatriano, Chief Marketing Officer from College Ave Student Loans. And this is a conversation I am so excited to have because before I started researching College Ave Student Loans, I feel like, you know, I was like your typical buyer. I knew nothing. So I want to just start by saying thank you for your website because it is so robust. And I just felt like every time I had a question, I could just click on something and get an answer. So Shout out to you guys, amazing website, very, very amazing resource. And I hope parents who are listening will check it out because it's like a one-stop shop. Even if you're not in the market for a private loan, it has all the resources you need to figure out how you're gonna pay for college. So thank you, Angela. Well, thank you. Uh, you. We do believe it's incredibly important to help people with all of the information that they might need so they can make an informed decision. And if they ultimately need a private student loan, then we can make ourselves available. But there really is a lot of information that people need to understand about the broader topic of paying for college to be able to make that smart choice. And so we wanna be able to address all of those issues so that if people do borrow, they can be very confident that they are doing the right thing for them and making a good decision. What are the different ways people can pay for college? So how families pay for college? First of all, I will tell you that there isn't one answer. It differs for each family. And even for each family, it's usually not one method. So usually you need to work through a variety of resources to pull together to pay for college. And that might even change year to year. So you may pay for freshman year in a slightly different way than you pay for sophomore year. The first thing you want to do is maximize any money that you don't have to pay back. So that's scholarships, merit aid, grants, anything along that line, free money. So apply for scholarships, make sure you fill out the FAFSA, which we'll talk about a little bit, a little bit more later on, but that's a way that you raise your hand to be considered for any type of aid. Um, so once you've exhausted that, any of the free money that you can get, then people typically look toward what can they pay out of pocket? What can they pay from their current cash flow? What can they pay from savings? And then you want to maximize loans in the student's name through the federal program. So free money first, cash flow and savings, and then federal loans in the student's name. And if you've gone through all of those methods and you still have a gap that you might need to fill, that's when you then get into either considering parent plus loans, which are federal loans that are made only to the parent or private student loans. We already know we've exhausted all the other resources, but like in the calendar year, when does it make the most sense? Yeah, I would say it probably is that April, May timeframe. Once you know you have your award letters, your student decides where they're attending and you nail down what some of those living arrangements are. Um, so then you have a better sense of not just the fact that you're going to need to borrow, but you've got some kind of ballpark idea of, of what that's going to be. So April, May is generally when we see people start that process of shopping around. You know, who, who offers these loans? What are the differences among the lenders? Where do I, you know, feel comfortable? Uh, and then again, usually from an application perspective, we often see people apply in the summer just as they get a little bit closer to knowing that exact dollar amount once the student has selected their classes and you know, really nailed down the living arrangements, that type of thing. For College Ave, the decisions that you make around your repayment do impact the cost of your loan. Um, I, I can't say that this necessarily applies to every other private lender, but at College Ave, they do. And really what we try to do is reward people for committing to actions that are gonna be good for them. So if you choose to make a payment during school, your interest rate will be lower than if you choose to defer the loan and, and start making payments after school. If you choose a shorter loan term, if you commit to paying the loan back in five years or eight years or 10 years instead of 15 years, you're going to get a lower interest rate than if you choose 15 years. And again, really that's designed to try to incent people to make those good choices, which are going to help them in the long run as well. I wanna talk a little bit about the conversation that should be taking place between parents and students. So in particular, when the parent is co-signing for a private loan, do they really intend to pay that back if there's a problem or even just upfront their plan is to pay that back? And what, what should those conversations be? Yeah. I think the conversations that parents have around 
um, the cost of college and paying for college really need to start early so that, that the child has the right understanding of have we saved? What do we think we can afford? You know, I think it's, it starts even all the way back when you're starting to decide which colleges do you even want to consider and apply to. And those are important transparent conversations to have because if you've started there, then when you get to the point where you've collectively made the decision to borrow, you have a good foundation to work from. And then if you're having the conversation around, okay, we're deciding to borrow and we're going to co-sign this private student loan with you, what does that mean? Well, it means, A, we should both be on the same page about who's taking responsibility for it. And that's one of those things too that I will tell you is it's not the same for every family. In some cases, the parent says, I'm co-signing this so you can be approved, but my expectation is you're paying back 100%. In some cases, parents say, I'm co-signing this and I'm going to make the payments while you're in school to help lower the cost, but I expect you to pick this up as soon as you graduate. In some cases, the parent will say, we're in this together because I want you to have skin in the game, but I'm gonna help you as much as I can. And the parent may actually end up being the one that pays back the bulk of that loan. It really needs to be an individual decision and you shouldn't assume that either one of you are on the same page. You need to have an explicit conversation with your child about what your expectations are as you go into this transaction together. And then you need to explain to them as well, and you need to understand yourself that regardless of what agreement you've made at the kitchen table, you this loan will appear on both of your credit bureaus. So if your expectation is that the student is making the payments and the student is not making the payments, that's still going to reflect poorly on your credit report, even, even though you, your expectation was that the student was doing it. So everyone needs to be on the same page with what your informal expectations are, but then what the implications are if that doesn't happen and how that can either you know, benefit the other person by that good payment behavior or how that could negatively impact the other party if the payments are not getting made on time. Angela Colatriano, Chief Marketing Officer from College Ave Student Loans. You are a wealth of information and thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thank you, Susan. It was such a pleasure to be here.